following is a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about this, Cowboys? Yeah! This is Talkin' Cowboys. Streaming live from the Dallas Cowboys World Headquarters at the Star in Frisco. First down. Hand off, Elliott plowing to the goal line. Barry, sacked by Lord. Prescott keeps it, and he bangs it into the touchdown. And now your hosts, Isaiah Stanback. Heckma Harrison, Rob Phillips, and Kyle Yeomans. For one final time prior to training camp, we are live from the star in Frisco. It's Talking Cowboys presented by Geico in a rainy Frisco, uh, I guess, afternoon now. Normally we start this show in the morning, but we are just a tad bit behind here on this Monday, but not behind on Cowboys news. We've got plenty to catch up on here from inside the SWBC Mortgage Studios. Kyle Yeomans, Rob Phillips, Isaiah Stanback, and Heckma Harrison. Gentlemen, it's one final time before training camp. It's crazy that we're already to this. Yeah, moment. come on, Kyle. This is our last time, and you're just kind of like walking us in. Is the walking. weather getting? Is the weather getting to you? Is it smooth R and B? What's going on? I thought right that now, was a guys. pretty hype open. That was good. No. Nah. Not, not so much. <laughs> hey, come on. Okay. No, it was sad. good. It was good. It was good. Thank you. I'm just yeah. sad that you guys are leaving. And we just got back in studio, and now we got to wait again. And it's just a whole thing. Mm. No, we, we're, we're going to catch up here over the next hour and kind of look at OTAs. We're going to answer some Twitter questions in Mailbag Twitter. Monday. And then we're also going to preview some training camp uh Superlatives, let's just say that so far in the final segment. But, gentlemen, I do want to catch up on OTAs. We got a chance to watch practice last Thursday, which was a ton of fun. And we've had content throughout the week on DallasCowboys.com showcasing the practices and, and wanted to get some notes. Heckma, you had another great article. We'll let you start. Anything that stuck out to you in terms of OTAs last week? We got some competition battles brewing, that's for sure. Con- uh, cornerback position. Uh, it's going to be a war. Can't wait for that. Uh, in Oxnard or wherever two days are going to be. Still not official. Had been an official announcement. I think that is the I know you don't like that, P. You know, you know. I, like, I just want to know. I just want to know. <laughs> the suspense is killing everybody. Probably just got to know if he can pack a bag or not. Yeah. If I'm leaving my kid for five weeks, my wife's gonna be mad at me. I just want to know. Yeah. Just be able to prepare for that. <laughs> Are you gonna be on the couch now or later? I mean, yeah. one way or another, you want to know. But I just think the, you know, the cornerback was linebacker as well. Line throw linebacker mm-hmm. in there. There's a lot of position battles that are brewing, and want to see how this offensive line shapes up. You know, offensive line wise, there's just man a lot ball. You know, want to see Biotish uh, and those guys, but man, literally our rookies are showing themselves. Those mm-hmm. draft picks are uh, proving their value, and I can hear Chris Beam in my head saying that this is the underwear Olympics of the OTA. So don't go too far out on the limb on anybody. Uh, but you know, I like what I see. Uh, Nation Wright, E Honda. He's continuously showing that he should have been taken a lot sooner than 99. I'm just oh, wow. Isaiah, somewhere in there. Because we've had some discussions on this show. He said he should have been taken higher. He should be. He should have been. So it's just one of those things, man. With like, like I said, man, the 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 battles on defense, but also number 20, our guy, man. He, the you know he is showing that he is another bona fide weapon. Uh, at the running back position. And I know that's kind of one of those things like what when you start talking about running back position, but his ability to, you know, be play multiple roles in the offense also uh, as a wide receiver. I think Tony Pollard is someone that it, we have just, I don't want to say underestimated, but we hadn't seen his, his value be actualized. I thought Dak looked really good last week. I mean, now there's a couple plays on the ball against him. Leighton Van Der Esch, who, by the way, looked really good last week as well. Uh, got a pick on him near the sideline, kind of scared all of us with uh, getting the wind knocked out of him on that play and was down for a couple minutes. But I thought Dak came back, hit some really nice throws. I thought he was in rhythm with his receivers. Simi Fajoko, Isaiah, had a mm-hmm. nice day good. two weeks ago or last week. A couple catches from Dak. Uh, but I just thought I thought number four looked looked comfortable. They're still limiting what he's doing. Uh, there's still no pass rush in front of him, but um, you, you're starting to see the timing with his receivers. I think I think he's getting more comfortable back there. 
Oh, and that's beautiful to hear in OTAs and not necessarily during training camp as well. Uh, Isaiah, as long as your mic is working. Yeah. Uh, oh, there it is. Check, check. Am I there? there? You, go. Hello. Yeah, you sound great. There it is. Yeah, you sound fantastic. Everybody. Now, so uh, what did you see from practice from uh, an offensive standpoint? I, I do want to talk receivers coming up in a minute. So maybe outside of receivers, w- what did you see? Whenever it came to OTAs, yeah, I think my, my all my attention really goes to the same thing Heckman uh, pointed out, which were um, the linebacker committee. Uh, I think <laughs> assault by committee, and mm-hmm. I think uh, the secondary. The secondary, you know, this is it's pretty inspiring to know that we have this discussion in terms of who is going to be on the roster versus um, being able to, select, you know, obviously acknowledge the handful of guys that are going to be on the roster. So and now, uh, now that you know the competition has stepped up, uh, there's a lot of guys to select from. There's a, I mean, the safety position has been totally transformed. I'm looking forward to seeing how that shakes out. Uh, that's not a position that you typically have too much um, interchanging going on throughout the game versus a cornerback position. There's a lot more rotational um, aspect to it. So I'm, I'm looking forward to see who are going to be our, our sure safeties um, and then their backups. I don't. I think there's going to be a handful of guys Obviously, that are going to be disappointed. Going to be, going to be some disappointments this year um, in terms of who people think are going to be on the roster at that position um, and who won't be there. Um, and then, obviously, uh, just at the DB and at the cornerback position, I'm looking forward to seeing how these guys roll. I'm looking forward to seeing how they fit in these schemes, um, how we match up against the opponents going forward. Obviously, uh, these preseason games are going to be huge um, in, in terms of being able to decide who's going to be on this roster. And um, just looking forward to some competition, man. It's awesome. I missed out. I missed the name Zeke. Zeke, man, Zeke is looking Quick. S- sleek. <laughs> sleek Zeke, baby. Yeah. And, I mean, he's making moves. And, again, it's no contact and just seeing some of the things that he's doing just in one-on-one drills. And I, I said something about a move that he made on Jalen Smith, and they talked about it on in special teams as well. It's just, man, he, he, looks, he looks good. He's looking good. Uh, you know that from last year, he wants to get <clears throat> those fumbles and the things that he had go against him last year out, that bad taste out of his mouth because he, I believe he led the league uh, in fumbles from he the did. running back position. So, I mean, six yards away from eclipsing the 1,000, but at the same time, man, those fumbles, man, it, it, it has to be something that's lingering in his mind. Rob, what did you think about Zeke and what you saw from him? Uh, what Ekma said, I, I think Mickey kind of nudged me during practice and said, "Does he look? Does he look more sleek, it, it, sleek Zeke, like you said?" <laughs> and and I, I think so. I mean, but you know what? I said that last year. I, th- I thought he looked good last year going into the season. It's I what thought you, so too. It's what you said, Heck. It, it, it was those fumbles early on that really frustrated him. Got the offense in some bad spots, and the defense really no margin for error defensively last Man. year so your offense isn't helping you yeah. and then you know let's not forget he dealt with some stuff down the stretch last year he played through some things uh, where he wasn't healthy and I, I think I think he's on a mission this year I know Leighton said that to us after practice that he's on a mission I think Zeke Zeke's a competitor yeah, I know absolutely. I know he got his big contract but I guarantee you he's not happy with the way he played last year and, and look, the line, 12 different line combinations. <laughs> doesn't do, help you at that Doesn't position. help you either. I mean, look, I you know, Barry Sanders might have been able to do it in Detroit for a couple of years you know, during his career, but no matter how good a back is, you've got to have some continuity up front. And the, the problem was the fumbles. That was the biggest thing. I yeah. mean, you can't average one fumble per touchdown rushing like he did last year. No. That can't happen. I mean, and that's that has nothing to do with the, the offensive line. That has nothing to do with your quarterback. I, I think having Dak back into the fray will help out a lot. And there was a stat that I read this week where Zeke benefited more with Dak Prescott than without Dak Prescott than any other player on this roster. 107 yards per game from scrimmage with Dak. Without Dak, he was down to 76. So that's almost a complete f- so you're saying 30 yards. With Dak, without Dak. Oh, yeah. With, with without. Without. <laughs> with, without. Yeah, you're exactly right. So he's going to benefit, and I think he is on that mission. That, I think. Make, that makes sense, though, right? That yeah, makes sense. When, it does. When, you're, when your passer <laughs> is no longer a part of the passing game, you turn right? into a running you game. You turn into a running game. And guess what? All 11 guys on defense know exactly where the ball has to go in order for these guys to get first down. So, I mean, the worst case scenario happened to Zeke last year in terms of at least him being healthy. Uh, if you're a healthy player and you're a running yeah. back, everything that happened last year, your quarterback went down, your offensive lineman went down, right? your tight end went down, it was the worst thing that could have happened for Zeke, worst-case scenario. So if there was ever a time to say, hey, how bad can it get for Zeke? Well, you already saw it. So everything else should be uh, up and up for him. I think when we look back through a season, sometimes you know we have kind of the narrative. like We know the running game wasn't what it was. The offense wasn't what it was. If you look a little deeper and you look like, I, I want to say like back in November – early December, 
the running game got on track. I think yeah. they were averaging like 150 yards a game. Yeah. Uh, the And Zach Martin, I want to say PFF had him as the highest rated run blocker. He went down whatever game that was, maybe Thanksgiving, mm-hmm. and they didn't get back on track. A healthy Zach Martin means so a much lot. to the run game. You mean a pro bowler? A pro bowler, oh, a pro, all pro, no maybe, maybe a future Hall of Famer one day. Ooh, yeah. they, H, put the, the yellow jacket on him. Ooh. I like that. I, I'm yeah, jumping I ahead on it. No, <laughs> that's okay. It's, I don't disagree. The trajectory he's on right now is certainly no, yeah. golden jacket worthy. No, absolutely. I mean, he's and, and I always kid my uncle and tell him that Zach Martin would have gave him problems. He better be glad he <laughs> played in a different era, and he laughs at that. Just but, remind everybody your uncle. Yeah, just come on, man. I think, come on, man. No, there are new yeah. listeners to Joe this Green's show. my uncle, guys, so if you didn't know that. The, so there it is. The, the great Joe yeah. Green. So, but but the other thing about Zeke, when we talk about him, I think he's the big reveal for the defense. You know, like mm. he is. Which Zeke are you getting? Are you getting yeah. halter top Zeke? Or are you getting fumble Zeke? You know, pop a <laughs> balloon. Let's oh, no. let's get halter top Zeke back in the building. Yeah. I mean, and for the defense. Him being on track is actually going to help these guys' case. Tremendously. I mean, you look at the fumbles that he had last year, where he had those fumbles, and what position that put the defense in. You you know football well enough to know mm-hmm. when you got a running back that's grinding it out, getting those first downs for you, extending ball position, field, all of those things in, in time of possession. I was about to say that, ma- yeah. that makes the game so much easier. And you saw situations where the, just the Cowboys couldn't get any rhythm at all because yeah. Zeke couldn't get any rhythm. Yeah. You're. It's a great point. And, and Tony Pollard, too, when they asked Tony Pollard to be not the changeup necessarily, but like, premier. you know, he had a shoulder, yeah, more of a load with Zeke banged up. He struggled, too, yeah. with, with a large amount of carries. It's just, it, it, you know, it was hard to get things established up front for a lot of last season. It, it goes back to the fumbles and then yards per carry. It, the chunk yardage was better for Pollard, but like you said, in terms of the grand scheme of things, he struggled, but he held on to the football oh, in sure. the struggle. <laughs> sure. That's, that, that's well, where it out. really boils down to. Now, We've talked about some of these wide receivers, sticking with the offensive side of the football. We've talked about some of the lower wide receivers on the group. I want to talk about the big three a little bit here. The reason why is, I, I, first thing I noticed when it, whenever I saw OTA practice on Thursday, I brought out the binoculars. I looked at 88. That man has put on some weight, in a good way. Mm-hmm. Like, good weight. Oh, man, he looks big. He looks strong. The thighs, there's a picture online There's a, of a story, I believe. I think it's a featured picture on one of the stories on, on DallasCowboys.com. And his thighs are like the size of this table. Like, I mean, they're just <laughs> massive. What do you think the expectation should be for the big three receivers? Is this the chance for C.D. Lamb to maybe make it a, a step up and maybe even be challenging with Amari Cooper in his second year as the number one receiver? Or is Amari Cooper going to come in and, and have to keep that mentality, of course, with and out at the end of his contract. There's a contract here for Michael Gallup. There's a lot of questions around this part of the team. Well, I'm conceding to the receiver. <laughs> I mean, I think the expectation is where they kind of where they left off when, when before Dak got hurt, right? It was just, you know, just having a level of consistency and um, and uh, yeah, I mean, these guys. You can, you can. These guys can take you take you out from every angle, and that's essentially what this offense is built to do. It's built to have a, a consistent running game. It's built to have a quarterback who's, who's a game manager who can also make plays as well. Who has a big arm. Um, it's meant to no matter who you line up on, with your your first DB, your second DB, your third best DB, they're going to get routed up because our three are better than your three. Oh, and by the way, we have a tight end as well by the name of Jarwin who can run by your your fourth best guy. <laughs> so I mean, so that's what this offense is made to do. So in terms of expectations. I don't have, or nor do I put any expectations on one particular person. Yeah. I look at how each person is going to positively affect the entire offense and their ability to keep uh, keep on the field, right? Mm-hmm. So time of possession, mm-hmm. which is huge, right, in terms of your ability to win ball games. We've talked about that a lot last year, but also be able to continue to move these chains, yeah. right? That's what you want to do. So we talk about being able to play complementary football, and helping your defense out. Is huge. So if we don't have a balanced attack, if we can't keep guys at bay, then we're going to struggle. But as long as we can keep their running game going, as long as we can keep Dak upright, I think all these guys are going to eat. Who do you think in the wide receiving core is best equipped to achieve that? Achieve, achieve what? I think I think they're all going to do. I mean, I no, think they're I know, all but play I'm saying part. best out of the out of the group. Which one's the best right now in that regard? I mean, in terms of numbers, in terms of pure numbers, I think Cooper's always going to get the, the biggest numbers because I think he's always going to be the biggest threat. You down think the so field. again in twenty twenty one? Yeah, I mean, but I, do I think that? And I don't want I don't want to get killed on this by everybody in the world, but Cowboys. I, I, yeah, exactly. Let's clip this off. When it comes to <laughs> numbers, isn't everything? 
I'll put it that way. Numbers isn't everything. It doesn't tell the entire story, right? It doesn't tell you the story about how, uh, you know, Amari Cooper goes out here and gets, you know, 150 yards in a, in a game. Well, would he have got that 150 yards if CD wasn't inside of him, hmm. right? Him lining up and, and keeping that safety at bay, right? Keeping those linebackers off him. So there's a lot of other intricacies that really go into the game that don't necessarily always reflect in stats. I agree. Yeah. I, I think that's 100% accurate but also there are other numbers that do tell a story mm-hmm. about who is the better receiver of the two and that's also called cha-ching money numbers i mean the numbers are there for amari cooper and then we're gonna see very mm-hmm. quickly here in next offseason where whether or not those that money is there for michael gallup as well so i'm gonna ask you the same question heckma which one of those receivers is best equipped right now to help this team succeed and i'm asking is there a chance that it's not amari cooper yeah, I mean, C.D. Lamb. And you, you look at C.D. Lamb and the attention that Amari Cooper is going to get, like you you pointed out. I mean, teams are going to ha- just have to pick their own poison on who you're yeah. going to allow to expose you. But in the second year, I look for a guy like C.D. Lamb to make strides, you know, get past that 1,000-yard uh, level uh, because it's going to be hard for teams to deal with him one-on-one. And so you see his just ability, his just – acrobatic nature to go up in high point balls. That's what he does a lot better than a lot of uh, NFL receivers. And so I just think CeeDee Lamb is in that conversation to make the stride in the second year. But let's not gloss over the fact that <clears throat> Michael Gallup has been yeah. crisp yeah. in OTAs. And really he good. is – Michael Gallup has just been – you know, like – what he's done in this offense it is kind of underappreciated uh, by fans and he, the, the trade rumors and things like that. So when you talk about a guy being in the contract year and being one of Dak Prescott's favorites, you know, amongst the receiving group, I look for him to to do special things too. Yeah, I to your point, like I, he gets overlooked, and and the and the I think everybody gets so excited about the draft leading up to the draft. That was a big conversation. Like, oh, if you. You could pick up an extra pick, you know, because maybe you don't re-sign Gallup next year. Worry about next year, next year. Right. Like you just signed Dak Prescott to 160 million plus. Give him the best group you possibly can. Mm-hmm. Make your offense as good as you possibly can, and then just kind of see what happens when 2022 rolls around. But um, to Isaiah's point, I watched a lot of playoff basketball over the weekend. <laughs> this receiver mm-hmm. core reminds me; it's kind of Nets like, you know, they all make each other better. They all complement each other and help each other get open because yeah. of their presence. Um, and and so I think from that standpoint, they're all important to each other. Who's the best receiver on the team? Amari Cooper's okay. the best receiver on the team. Yeah. He's the most consistent receiver on the team. I went back and I think I did a top 10 of his best plays of 2021. It's a very quiet, at times, 93 catches because yeah. it's not always flashy, yeah. but he's helping move the chains yeah. consistently with four different quarterbacks last year. I think CeeDee Lamb's prime for a big year. I think you watch him two times already, and you can tell, yeah. to your point, yeah. I think he's going to be special. And he already is special. Yeah. Uh, I think he did – he was up there in drops last year. You know, he missed some, he missed some opportunities to make some big plays. Um, I think he had – I don't want to misquote it. I want to say it was like nine, nine drops. Uh, he cleans that up, just like Mike cleaned that up a little bit for himself last year coming off of 2019. He'll be even better, much better. And I don't think we can t- totally put all the pressure on the receivers. I know, obviously, they're the, <laughs> they're the ones that have to go out there and make the plays. But at the end of the day, there's a gentleman who happens to have a, a, a massive uh, call sheet larger than the one that Kyle has. And, and, <laughs> and, he, and he decides who who's in the best position to make plays on a certain play. Right against certain schemes, so let's let's not take the take the pressure off of um, off of Kellen Moore and his ability to be able to call plays that would give these guys the best opportunity to be successful. Oh, and by the way, we had this issue in the red zone, right? And there's a guy that they brought in by the name of Mac Adu, right? So uh, <laughs> let's see what effect that he has over these guys and their ability to score points in the red zone, because this conversation might change when we see that. Look Mac- at you trying to start controversy. Man. I just said, <laughs> no, I mean, it's something to look at. I, I went back and looked at the numbers. <laughs> Uh, red red zone wise between Kellen Moore and Ben McAdoo during their times as offensive coordinators. As an offensive coordinator, McAdoo was way better than Kellen Moore in the red zone, just average per career. As a head coach, actually McAdoo mm-hmm. was not as good as Kellen Moore yeah. in the red zone. So that's just kind yeah. of an interesting tidbit. But going back to the wide receivers, I completely agree with what you guys said. I still think it is Amari Cooper, 
and then it's 2A, 2B. I mean, yeah. wh whichever one has a better game yep. is ultimately what it's going to end up looking like see, between C.D. Lamb and Michael Gallup. And, and I don't, you know, we talked about the fourth and fifth receiver spots. We just, I, I don't think we remember how active those Cedric Wilson and Noah Brown were yeah, in this awesome. offense. I yeah. mean, there were several times yeah. where, where, you know, Cedric Wilson was, you know, they targeted. Yeah. several times and so that's yeah. a big part of our offense that hasn't been figured out if we're going to go back to said Wilson there or if one of these undrafted free agents going to make a push or is Simi Fajoko mm. is going to make a push. I mean <laughs> yeah so we're going to have a fourth and we're going to have a fifth receiver yes <laughs> right that's, that's, that's facts right maybe, it's a, maybe let's, six. let's act as if our guys are never going to get hurt okay let's act as if that which is I like pray, pray for that right yeah that sounds great but that's NFL's reality is probably not it but okay so say we roll with, the, with these three Right, we got our big three, right? And then we throw in a, a Cedric Wilson, Noah Brown, or Fahoko or whoever else might want to compete for that spot. Right. What's the reality that those that those number four and number five are gonna get on the field if Jarwin's healthy? Not a lot. Exactly, right? So we start looking at that, right? So number four, number five, you might get in there to to I mean, receivers are not coming off the field most times now in, in a league. They're just not, especially the higher the higher pay guys. Coop, guys like that, they're not coming off the field. So if I if I bring a number four in the game, he's probably coming in to block. Probably coming in the block, or he's coming to take the top off, right? And if he if he happens to blow by the guy, I'm gonna throw it up to him, right? Like we've seen Cedric Wilson do. He did um, it against Seattle. He did it against Seattle, absolutely. Right. That was so, a perfect example because in that game specifically, Amari Cooper didn't have as many snaps, yeah. and, and so Cedric Wilson came in absolutely. and played. Same thing down the stretch with Noah Brown. They would come yeah. in and they would take one of those receivers off the field, whether they were having an ailment or yeah. they just needed a breather, yep. and those guys would come in as the the fillers, and yeah. that's all you need them to be. For sure, absolutely. So I'm just I'm I'm, I'm curious to see. With a healthy big four, I'll call it, because I'll throw Jarwin in there. Sure. With a healthy big four, what are the opportunities that are presented to these guys and how spread out is this ball going to be? Because we have not seen this offense with all four of those guys on a consistent basis go throughout even a four-game span. Yeah. That's uh, interesting. I hadn't thought about that because I feel like Noah Brown and said earned spots in the rotation, oh. to y'all's point. But – if Jarwin, who's kind of he's not a receiver, but he has receiver type Tennessee, skills, yeah. maybe that changes the rotation or the availability of snaps because yeah. because Dalton Schultz too is probably going to be there. in that mix too. But yeah. I still like I mean, look, I, I love Jarwin. I think he's a you know he does a great uh, job receiving. But I think we only got a sample size of it, obviously, with him getting hurt in the yeah, first game. Absolutely. But I think with the way that Kellen Moore's scheme is, he goes to the three by one set with wide receivers and not the tight end. Mm -hmm. And even when he goes to a twin set. You know, it's you know. <laughs> I'm just saying. You know, I agree. But how much is Jarwin getting paid per year? Mm. Uh, it's not a ton. It was three years, twenty two mil. He got a nice contract. Yeah, yeah. Four, four years, it's twenty two mil. Yeah, it's healthy. He's getting so just over so five. A he's going to get the ball. He's getting paid to play. So he's going to get the ball, and yeah. one year's gone. Right. Yeah. So yeah. he's, he's going to get. I say all that to say the business side of it says he's going to get the ball. So that's that's what I'm talking about, right? They're not going to just have him on the roster just to, <laughs> just as another guy. That's that's all I'm getting. Good at. Point. If Jarwin's getting, if he's on a roster, they're going to find a way to get him the ball in consistently. And Schultz is still on his rookie. And Schultz deal. is still going to be there too. So Schultz Schultz He'll be, be right a two by two set, all that jazz, right? But trust me, it's going to be our three our three goons at receiver. And trust me, Jarwin's going to find. They're going to find a way to get him that rock. So. That's another. That's another sixty balls, seventy balls <laughs> yeah. gone. It's, it, yeah. This is kind of a, a surprising stat, but the Cowboys last year led the NFL with eighty-one dropped passes. You remember that last year? That makes sense, though. Eighty-one since twenty nineteen, they have three players with ten plus drops since I guess over the past two seasons. Yeah. There are only thirty-two players in the NFL, and the Cowboys have three of them. Yeah. That's Amari Cooper. Michael Gallup and Ezekiel Elliott. He has 14 drops since 2019. CD Lamb, by the way, had nine last year. So, yeah. drops are an issue. It, it doesn't necessarily take away from how good this receiving core is because they're still an elite yeah. receiving core. And probably with Dak Prescott back in the mix, I don't think those numbers are as inflated as they were a year ago. But we'll talk plenty more about the wide receivers whenever training camp comes around because there is a battle for that fourth, that fifth spot at wide receiver. Maybe even yeah. if they want to put a sixth on Maybe the roster six. in terms of the uh, the special teams the as chance. well. But when we come back here on Talking Cowboys, we're going to try and predict who will start the year and end the year at cornerback mm -hmm. based off of a Twitter question. We'll answer some of those questions with Mailbag Monday when we return right after this.
Honey, big news. Gary, are you okay? Oh, I'm not Gary anymore. I'm Jackie Flash. What? See, I want the latest smartphone, but the best deals are only for new customers. So to get a new customer deal, I changed my name to Jackie Flash. Okay, but the best smartphone deals at AT AT&T are for everyone, new and existing customers. That's huge. Then guess who's getting a deal? Is it Jackie Flash? Jackie Flash. It's not complicated. At AT AT&T, our best smartphone deals are for everyone. Restrictions apply. Visit att.com for details. Want to use what the pros use? How about the official men's skincare brand of the Dallas Cowboys? Jack Black. Right now, you can get the Jack Black Starter, a curated collection of Cowboys locker room favorites for just 10 bucks with free shipping. The starter includes four Jack Black skincare favorites plus a full-sized intense therapy lip balm. Go to getjackblack.com slash cowboys and use the code word TEAMJB. That's getjackblack.com slash cowboys. The Jack Black Starter, 10 bucks, free shipping. Before there was a draft, you could size up a cowboy by three simple factors. The crease in his hat, the bend of his brim, and his unbending attitude. A man Stetson didn't just protect him from what life threw at him. It projected a rugged, unstoppable spirit. Stetson hats are still American-made with pride right here in Texas. They're still the unofficial crown of all self-respecting cowboys. And Stetson is proud to be on the field with America's team. Find a retailer nearest you at stetson.com slash cowboys. There's nothing as unique as our eyes, which is why Essilor pioneers ways to make lenses as unique as you. Verilux for super sharp vision, Essential Blue for protection, and Crizal for freedom from glare. Three cutting edge solutions in a single unique lens. So whatever your needs, insist on Essilor. Visit your local Essilor experts and find the perfect lens for you. See more, do more, Essilor. Back to Talking Cowboys. Did you know that you could get the ultimate fan experience for the ultimate Dallas Cowboys fan? I did not, Kyle. Well, you can join Dallas Cowboys United, presented by Globe Life, starting at just $20. How about that deal? Sweet. Join now. You can get exclusive fan pack. You can get access to discounts and more member benefits. You know where you can find that? No, where, Kyle? DallasCowboys.com slash United for details. Oh, I'm going to ask Daddy Warmbucks for $20, Isaiah. <laughs> <laughs> Let me get that. It's like a cup of coffee nowadays, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> that's true. Honestly, yeah, that, that's not far off. But second segment here of Talking Cowboys, our final show prior to training camp. That sucks. Camp, it does. Uh, uh, so glad everybody's been with us, though. I mean, I know this is this has been the first year with the new crew and everything. And we, I mean, we feel like everybody that listens to this show is family, really. I true. mean, it, it's a Talking Cowboys nation, no doubt about it. Uh, and we love every single one of you, and we appreciate every time you listen, you share, you like, you follow, anything. We definitely appreciate it because we have a ton of fun talking Cowboys with you guys. And hopefully we're able to learn something along the way as you guys learn some stuff along the way. Because I learn from these guys every single day. But, Rob, there are some mailbag questions we've got to get to. It's Mailbag Monday time, and i got oh. some Twitter questions this week. Okay. We're going to start things off with a, a combo question. This is from Dan and Mike. I'm going to throw Mike Crum in there because he's a loyal listener, and he was he wanted to be a part of this question too. Try and predict how the Cowboys will start and end the year with the starters at the cornerback position. So, of course, there's been quite the few changes throughout, but at the same time, right now, it looks like the starters might be the same as what we saw in 2021 minus Chidobe Awuzie, but... Is there any big change that you see on the horizon? At the moment, it's no. It's uh, Trayvon Diggs, it's Anthony Brown, and it's Jordan Lewis. And I I very well could see that happen in week one. Now, that doesn't mean you drafted two young players that have a lot of talent. It doesn't mean by the end of the year that might look different. We talked. We just talked about receiver. You could, you could have guys earning spots within rotation, get some snaps. Uh, but I definitely could see them leaning towards – veterans at that spot like Isaiah has been saying all along like you guys didn't love the idea of going corner in the first round because you'd be awfully young at your corner spots um they'd be awfully young if they if they if Kelvin Joseph or Nashawn Wright started week one but hey that's what camp's for we'll find out so okay so we're gonna go around and give our starters and then we're gonna talk about who we think might be there at the end of the year so starters for you Isaiah Starters, I think just what just what Rob P said, the same guys from last year. Um, obviously, we got Jay Lou, A Brown, and 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 Trayvon Diggs. 
I'm going the same. I've just seen them compete, and definitely Anthony Brown and Trayvon Diggs would be in that conversation, and also Jordan Lewis. Uh, based off what I've seen so far. Well, and based off of following the money, right? That's what you're told. Follow the money, and Jordan Lewis, of course, <laughs> signing his new deal as well. I, I'm right there with you. After he signed his three-year, $13.5 million contract, Jordan Lewis, I think, is a starter at the moment. He's going to start in the slot. Anthony Brown will be on the outside. Trayvon Diggs uh, will be on the outside as well. Those are my three there. I think you're going to see a heavy dose of Kelvin Joseph, especially early on. I think you're going to see exactly what he has pretty quickly. Outside or inside? That's what I was about to ask you, mm. honestly. Because mm. I, you I see go him being, either I see way. Him being inside. He could go either way. I think he's versatile enough, and I think he's skilled enough to do so. But I think that uh, I think the first thing you do is put him on the inside, why especially, you, especially week one. <laughs> why do you think he would be better inside? Uh, he's quick. He's shifty. Uh, he's more. He's more. As we're as this defense is starting to change, you can you can see the direction that this secondary is starting to go in. Um, we're most likely going to have two six four safeties. Just call it how that is. Sorry if that was. You think surprising it uh, Yeah, I mean, I, I, there's there's a chance that we have two six four safeties on this on this roster. Um, there's yeah. also I don't know if you guys have been paying attention, but we have some tall cornerbacks now as well. Yes, we uh, do. And Sean Wright, right? <laughs> um, so um, you got Diggy Zua. You know, obviously you got some guys that can that can put some hands on some people. Um, we have size. So when you start looking at kind of how Dan Quinn is starting to scheme up this this defense in the secondary. He wants one side, somebody who can just lock you down or stay in your hip pocket the whole time. He wants another side where they can put their hands in your chest, right? Well, on the inside, where that's where teams are going to try to hide their their shifty guy. So guess where you put your shifty guy? Yeah. On the inside. inside. So mm-hmm. that's why you that's why um that's what I believe. I believe that he's 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 kind of getting KJ or you know, Kevin Jones. I think he's getting him ready um to play both. But I think primarily he'll have the biggest impact on the inside for this team. Yeah, I like Kevin Joseph on the inside. I, but you know, it's going to be it's going to be a serious undertaking right now. Jordan Lewis is playing with that sense of urgency that we mm-hmm. talked about. These mm-hmm. guys know that they're on the hot seat, and with signing those contracts, that that the pressure intensifies yeah. uh, to perform because you've been rewarded sure. uh, in a sense. And so, but Kelvin Joseph. Again, follow the money he, it, the, and the draft pick. He was picked it in the second round, and and there are not a lot of teams that let the second round draft pick sit on the bench. Yeah, uh, they're going to put that guy in and see exactly what he has, and we're going to get a, a a full serving mm-hmm. of Kelvin jo- Kelvin Joseph in the preseason. We'll find out if he can play or not. Uh, but Nation Wright is the one guy in this whole equation that I think you know more people need to start paying attention to because at the end of the year, if we're looking down the line. It may be a situation where that third round pick is the one that you're talking about more than the second. E Honda. Yeah, I was just gonna. Yeah, that's where I was going because Chris or I'm, CB's on vacation. Yep. Scott and Aaron just rolled a lot of highlights of Sean Wright, and we watch practice, he gets an interception. We watch practice, he gets a pick. I mm. get it. It's shorts. It's pajamas. It's all that stuff. <laughs> you put the, there's a long way to go. He you James. put the pads on. You gotta. You gotta go through the grind of camp. You gotta show out. Um, but. If this keeps up, he's going to be on the field. I already feel like he's on the team. There, you know, he's Dan Quinn wants to develop him. There's no question about yeah, it. Yeah, he's a top three round pick. But I mean, may, he's a third round selection. But maybe he's playing this year. You know, if he if yeah. he can continue to show this and continue to develop again, very 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 early. Hmm. That's. That's intriguing because – Based we, off what, how you felt about the pick. Yeah, yeah you're I right. Mean, it, 100%. Yeah. I was not – I was nowhere close to where <laughs> I am right now with Nashawn Wright. Now, of course, after the draft, we went and we watched film and we said, okay, we see the fit, but is he good enough? And right now, he's like you said, he's showing out with what we've been able to see in the very, very, very small sample size. The preseason is going to be huge for both sure, of those guys. Sure, The The first couple weeks of the season are going to be gigantic for both of those guys. But we saw it last year with Trayvon Diggs – premium secondary picks are going to see the field. Now, Trayvon Diggs was thrown into a tough situation where he had to start because of the injuries to Chidobe Awuzie and and because of the lack of availability with Anthony Brown at times. Trayvon Diggs was thrusted into that starting job by the necessity of having it. There's not that, at least right now. Hopefully that stays the case. Hopefully everybody stays healthy. There's not that necessity right now, so it'll be interesting to see how they finish up. How do you feel like they'll finish up, Rob? Uh, I mean, I'm I'm with Heck. I think if Kelvin Joseph is not a walk-in starter, I think he's going to be playing. By the end of the year, if if he's on track the way they think he can be, and we haven't seen a lot of him Mm -hmm. so far – I, th- I think he'll be playing quite a bit. I just to your all's point, like he's a second round pick. They have a lot of abil- uh, 
belief in him. Like Isaiah said, he's got some flexibility. He can he can play inside or out. He's going to be on the field. I'm pretty confident of that. Now I want to ask this in the end of the table. Do you guys want to put a pick in here? Is Nashawn Wright going to start at least one game by the end of the year? Yes. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Especially as you start facing some of these larger receivers. Heck yeah. You think he'll be right there? Heck yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I think the learning. Hey, curve. no more. We don't have to face Julio Jones anymore. That's a celebration. Yeah. Hey, yeah. how about that? That was that steal. Tight. That's a whole nother deal a right there. That's, that's, a, that's, a, that's, a, steal. that's yeah. a giveaway. Fifth. Fifth. Thank you. Flea market is what the Titans yeah, that was crazy. picked out. Um, but, you know, Nation Wright, again, not getting overly excited about it. We have to get to camp to see what yeah, he can do. Of course. Uh, but I just believe in Dan Quinn, man. He is as advertised. The way that you talked about him, the energy that he approaches practice with, the guy's interaction with uh, Dan Quinn. I mean, his involvement, and from one point he's down with the defensive lineman, the next thing you know he's on the other <laughs> side with the cornerbacks. Like, wait a minute, he was just, you yeah. know. And I swear so, he's got a teleportation device on the field. You're there's right. no way he You're got right. from one you side to the – well, how did he other. get down there? You know, and he's – and just – the competition that he's reading, the culture mm-hmm. that you talked mm-hmm. about, these guys are competing. And you look at last year. I mean, at, some, at a certain point, we're going to get to the point where we're not talking about 2020 anymore, right? Yeah. Uh, but still, when you go back to the fact that guys couldn't play fast because they didn't understand alignment and assignment, they didn't know where they were. There were two guys in one area and a guy running – Free, right? So I think the simplified approach to Dan Quinn's defense and just his involvement, hands-on approach, I think that's going to make the difference in the secondary. I don't know if he starts unless there's an injury, but look, everybody's got to be ready because you need four good corners in today's NFL anyway, at least. And Anthony Brown's missed, I think, 13 games the last two years. Cheeto missed some games last year, yep. not on the roster anymore. Jordan missed the opener. So you have to have some depth there. Rashard Robinson started a couple games, I think, last year. So oh my it's possible. It's possible you might see the rookies in the starting lineup. And as, we're, as, we're, and as we're talking about, you know, the guys don't have pads on yet, understand, right? Just take it from somebody who's, who's been, been <laughs> through it a little bit. OTAs is harder on DBs than it is on receivers. So when the pads get on, whatever the DBs are doing, usually it gets better, especially the physical DBs, right? So when you talk about guys like like Nation Wright who get up there in your face and they put their hands on your chest, guess what? It's a little bit harder when they're slipping and sliding on shirts that they really get. You know what I'm saying? That's interesting. Yeah. Right? When you yeah. get up there and you got some pads on, now I can I can now I can grab you. Yeah. Now I can grab you. Now I can punch you in your chest without the coach thinking I'm going to hurt somebody. <laughs> right? So what, as good as you guys are seeing Nation B right now, it's only going to get better. Hopefully. I hope that's just, the case. Just if saying, it continues just, ascending, there's uh, – but, but in the, as we're talking about the secondary, I personally think this might be a curveball. I think the, the safety position is more competitive than a, than a cornerback uh, position. Okay. Why is that? Because you brought in two veterans. Curse. You brought in, you brought in, you, well, you brought in, brought in three Veteran. Well, yeah, yeah, I mean, well, whatever. Yeah, he Are you got, talking about Neil yeah. and Kazee? Yeah, Neil and Kazee. Okay. Yeah, I mean, yeah. so, and then you factor in the fact that you brought in Curse, right? Um, and then Wilson's not going anywhere. He's going to be there. Well, we know he's going to be there. So mm-hmm. you have, you're only going to carry four safeties. Yeah. Yeah, Thompson. So, so, so you, got, you, got, you got the two six four jokers, right? You got Darian Israel. Thompson. I like Israel, right? And you got Darian Thompson in there. I mean, like, the safety position is very competitive now, and it's harder to show – your abilities at safety, right? When you're talking about practice and evaluating things of that nature, it is very difficult to evaluate a safety skill set and what he's going to be able to uh, attribute to your team because guess what? A lot of times he's not being challenged. It's not corner it's line not up corner. against. Yeah. Yeah. It's not being challenged as much, yeah. right? So preseason games become in become you know very instrumental in terms of being able to tell who can ball, and that's not a position that you usually rotate out. Like I, like I mentioned earlier in the show, cornerback, guess what? Hey, you go out there, heck, you get you a couple plays, boom, I'll get you about it. All right, Kyle, get up in there. All right, Rob, you go get you some reps too, right? Yeah. Safety position, you're not doing that. Yeah. So how difficult is it going to be for these guys to determine who's going to have the most contributions to, their, to this roster? Mm. Now, I, I really think that's interesting that you bring that up about the safety position because I believe that there are a lot of guys have they've been living on potential. Yes. Right? And yeah. that potential at some point has to come to a maturity date. Yeah. And the maturity date is due now. The bill is due. It, the bill is due. And who, so, who are some of those guys? I think Thompson has definitely Thompson. has has lived on potential for a while, especially last year. Yeah, but I think that you know, but there's going to be you know return on investment. It's time. You know, they've put enough into him where he can give them something. You got a lot of bad tape out there if you're Thompson that you just look. You got to overcome that with the preseason. Yeah, I mean, I would lean towards Kizzy just because 
when Bill Parcells came in, he had the Parcells guys. Yep, absolutely. We got no, some Quint guys that are here. I agree. Uh, Donovan Wilson, I would think, is a starter, but we've seen Curse take some reps a lot um, early on. That was also because Wilson wasn't necessarily available. Yeah, right? and it's voluntary. And yeah. you so, know, so say if but, we had two two lock, two guys locked, right? Yeah. Say we got KZ and we got Wilson. Wilson. Those two are locked. I think we all can pretty much look Man, at each other. I feel way them. better about that than right. even so, what we had last year. So let's say say those two guys are locked. Who are the next two? You got you get to keep two more. A free, say, a free and a strong. I would say Curse and Mukwamu. At least right now. Right this very second, that's where I would put it. Darian Thompson, diff- maybe? Yeah. I, I mean, those I are the two. I don't disagree. I, 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 just, I think there's a lot of dudes. Yeah. You think? Do you agree with because, my Because it's going to come down to special teams, too. It's really going to come down to special true. teams. Thompson special was really teams. Thompson can help you there. Special teams. Thompson can help you there. Um, yeah. But then you start looking at – I mean, so you look at, start looking at special teams, but then you start looking at guys like, like Israel, right? Because I'm a big fan of him. Okay, he's 6'4", he can play special teams, and he wants to play special teams, right? That's where him and Thompson can really come in, right? They both want to be on teams. They want to have an impact there. But this way, if, I, if, I'm, if I'm Dan Quinn and somebody wants to throw the ball over the top, I want a six four guy. I want a six four guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I right? want that length. Yeah, right? exactly. Yep. Yeah, because he's only, what, 5'11"? He's not very big. How big is Curse? How tall is Curse? Uh, six, six, four. Six, four. He's six, yeah, four. Six, he's four. Real big. He's six, four, too. They view him as kind of a special, not specialty, but a guy that can cover tight ends. Mm-hmm. And he's a special teams. He's been a special teams core yeah, he's guy yeah, everywhere absolutely. he's been. But, so, but, but who has better footwork? Uh, oh, because he, for sure. At least based off of what I've seen in OTAs. Now, and I did tweet this out the other day. Let well, me address this really quickly. Because he's played corner in, the, in you're his right. career. You're right. You're 100% right. The, I tweeted out the other day in my OTA notes that I wasn't impressed with Curse. It was the footwork and just pace. Mm-hmm. That's Those are both things that can be fixed by the time even training camp comes around. So those are very, very temporary things. He didn't necessarily did like that tweet. Did y'all have a discussion about yeah, that? We did. Yeah, oh. we, <laughs> yeah, we did. We had a little get-together on that one. And I, I mean, I told him, I was like, dude, it's just OTAs. No big deal. You're going to be fine. It was just an observation. And and so it was quick, a quick little conversation. I do believe Curse will be on the, the, the team. I, I do think Taylor Smith. I think he'll be way. on the team. And uh, the reason why is also the the day after that practice. I mean, he had another good practice, from what I hear. I mean, we weren't able to watch it, but I hear there were good things that 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 next practice. So maybe it was just a a, a bad day, and hopefully that's the case because I want him to succeed in that regard, and I think he will be on the team. But you're right. It, then it comes down to Thompson. Is Thompson a, a good enough special teams player to keep around now to play safety? Competition. Competition. That's, every, that's everything going, we've been asking for. Is Mukwamu, and, and by the way, this is a question from Carson. I don't see how Carson. you can cut Mukwamu. I don't see okay. it. I do not see yeah, how be, you can cut him. Yeah. He, he's, just, he's long. He has great footwork. Right. He, I mean, he's he, a he, sixth-round pick. It's not like they have anything invested. He gives you yeah. flex. He's a college cornerback exactly. who can help his, you either his, spot. His footwork shows that he was a cornerback. Yeah. We showed last year, though, with Reggie Robinson, that same exact not position the same guy. wasn't no. necessarily. Not the same guy. I know, but it wasn't valued the same way. So why do you think it'll change we haven't brought Because he's up. taller? <laughs> No, yeah, we haven't brought him I, up. Well, I think he's just a better player. Yeah. I think he's a better athlete than Reggie Robinson was a fourth round pick though, and McCormick no, was a I, sixth I, no, round. No, 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 no. I completely understand that. I'm just looking at God man for man. Yeah. I think you got a better athlete yep. in I Izzy agree. than you do I in agree. Reggie Robinson. Is that just recency bias or is that legitimate like side by side? Is that what you see? Well that's what else can what I, I what else do I have yeah. to judge it by? When I look on the field yeah, when I look on the field and I look at both of those guys, Reggie Robinson no disrespect, he looks like another guy out hmm. there. And currently, Mukwamu looks currently. different. Yes, yes, stands right. out substantially. Not, it, not, not only his size and his and his and just his stature, right? But but also like I keep going back to his footwork. You don't get that footwork at that size of player. You do not. It's not common. It is not a. It's not normal for guys to be that big and have that kind of footwork. Now, when he get the pads on, let's see how he hits. Let's see, is he going to bring it when he gets some pads on, right? When we get to the when Pittsburgh game and some of the, maybe he doesn't play that much in Pittsburgh game, but some of the other games, is he going to come up and put, and hit somebody? That's when you get to tell, okay, if this boy can hit, oh, I, he, he has to be on his team. How hard is it to play safety as a rookie in this league? For what they're going to ask him to do? I don't think it's that hard. He'd be a special teams guy. Yeah. He's but, I mean, to, to get in the lineup, would you, do you – I mean – do you think he can compete for that spot, or do you I think, think they're think, just trying to develop him I, I, and get him ready for I think maybe down the line? If, if, out, of, out of probably any position, I'm going to make sure I stand behind this statement, more than <laughs> any position in football, I think it's easier to be to make the roster as a backup safety. 
I'll go with that. Just based off of developmental yes. potential? Yes. Okay. okay. And he's everything that your future needs. I mean, we, we spent a lot of time talking about Errol Thomas and a lot of other guys coming in in safety. And if you got a young dog on your roster, you know, you could, you could bury that whole conversation yeah. right there. The guy you got, yeah. you need, is already on yeah. your roster. And I'll he's take it nice. a step further. You know, in, in Dan Quinn's system, the, the guy that's that free safety, he's lurking. Yeah. I mean, he can. there's so many different yeah. ways that you can use your free safety. Sideline to sideline. Side yeah. to sideline in his system. And you talk about 6'4", <laughs> that with feet like his, he's covering a lot of ground lot of quickly. Ground. So, I mean, it's going to be, like I said, when these guys get to two a days, it's going to be a battle. How tall is somebody 6'4 when they put both arms up? Uh, they're tall Shaq size. I'm not going to say it. That's a hard ball to get over somebody. Yeah, I'm just saying, you know, wait, 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 yeah. when you're coming from depth, when you're coming from depth and you got that dude running sideline to sideline, and he goes up to go grab the ball, right? You factor in his vertical plus his probably what? I, we call it nine feet when he puts his arm up. Yeah. Call it nine feet, okay? Right? When he jumps up, and, dude, that's, that's, that's huge. It's huge. Y'all are going to make me get out my arm length on my my draft board <laughs> uh, for guys like Mukwamu. That's why I think Kazee, though, uh, based off of Heckma's point, that's why I think he's going to be the starter at safety. And, and now we've uh, we've disagree. named our entire starting yeah, secondary disagree. in this segment. So that's why I think he will be the starter because of what Dan yeah. Quinn expects out of I a free disagree. safety and what he could potentially be. So that's where I'm at. Ultimately, now when we come back on talking Cowboys, we're going to keep talking about expectations, managing expectations heading into training camp since this is our final show. But what are the expectations for Dak returning from surgery? We're going to hit that next when we come back on talking Cowboys. The Cowboys way where 16 Hall of Famers and five championships shows us what success looks like, where Turkey is always the second best part of Thanksgiving Day where we are all defined by one single thing, the star. Where we as fans know it's our job to keep the tradition going. Bank of America is proud to be the official bank of the Dallas Cowboys and to support the quest of living life the Cowboys way. Copyright 2020, Bank of America Corporation. Honey, big news. Gary, are you okay? Oh, I'm not Gary anymore. I'm Jackie Flash. What? See, I want the latest smartphone, but the best deals are only for new customers. So to get a new customer deal, I changed my name to Jackie Flash. Okay, but the best smartphone deals at AT AT&T are for everyone, new and existing customers. That's huge. Then guess who's getting a deal? Is it Jackie Flash? Jackie Flash. It's not complicated. At AT AT&T, our best smartphone deals are for everyone. Restrictions apply. Visit att.com for details. New Dr. Pepper Zero Sugar. You deserve it. I do deserve that. You deserve decadent flavor without sugar. And a day at the beach without sand getting everywhere. And a relaxing bath that your children don't interrupt. I deserve all that? It's really just a visual metaphor for Dr. Pepper Zero Sugar. Everything you want, nothing you don't. A visual metaphor on the radio. I do deserve that. Dr. Pepper Zero Sugar. The zero you deserve is finally here. Hi, I'm Clint Tillerson with United Ag and Turf. Cooler weather makes it easier to work outdoors, and we can make it even easier. With our Buckaroo package that features a 3025E, 25-horsepower tractor with a loader, rotary cutter, box blade, and a trailer for $295 per month. And the price you see is the price you'll pay. No surprises. What could be easier? Visit unitedagandturf.com. Offer ends February 1st, 2021. Restrictions apply. See dealer for details. Now let's get to work. Back to Talking Cowboys. From home or you're cheering in the stands with Essilor lenses, you can see every exciting play. Book an appointment at your local Essilor experts and see what Essilor can do for you. See more, do more, Essilor <laughs> on Talking Cowboys. See, Chris Beam is not here, so okay. yeah, Scott, get Scott doesn't yeah, realize get the that that's your time to shine. I didn't, I didn't throw the alley-oop to Scott. I should uh, have my heads up. Uh, that that's the thing. It's all good. <laughs> long, long Essilor. Essilor we see more, do, do more, more, Essilor. There we go. Now we got the camera <laughs> change. Fantastic. Just like that. Scott Purcell in the back running things this week, running Chris, the ship. Chris Beam is looking like the pharmaceutical commercial mm. right now, running on the beach. <laughs> <laughs> he just he said beach, he's by the way. The playing cornhole. I like it. Yeah, he's CBZ playing, deserves playing it, plenty of cornhole. Yes, he does. He, he deserves, deserves a vacation Nothing more than anybody. Everything. <laughs> 
That was Heckma Harrison. <laughs> Rob Phillips, Isaiah Stanback, I'm Kyle Yeomans. Final segment of Talking Cowboys prior to training camp. And we'll be back, of course, whenever the season starts getting ramped up again. And then, then we get to go all day, every weekday. How about that? I love it. Back to normal. I like Ooh. it. So I got another question that we didn't get to hit in the first, I guess, Mailbag Monday question or segment, I should say. Kenneth asked on Twitter, out of surgery, what are realistic expectations for Mr. Dak Prescott? As we know, Cowboys fans will always have those insanely high expectations. But what do you think is legitimately feasible? Do you think that there is a legitimate, I guess, rollback on what we should expect from Dak? And I think this is a great way to cap off the offseason of shows. Mr. Rob Phillips, we'll start with you. Uh, I think he's going to be Dak. I I really believe that. The only thing that would hold him back is if he's having problems with that ankle, and there's been no indication that that's going to be an issue for him. So if he's got his offensive line, he's got wide receivers to throw to, he's got a running back to hand it off to, oh, wait, he has all those things. Yeah. So I think he's going to be <laughs> at just At the moment, fun. he has at all the those moment, things. At the moment, he does, but we've also seen him win games and, and put up big numbers without starting tackles. I mean, he can do it um, with some guys missing. But I, to me... Aside from just getting his timing down and getting some of the rust off, I expect him guys to be just like himself. Out of 100%. You could go higher if you think he's going to be better. You could go lower. Where do you think he would be? Um, I, I think he's got a chance to go higher based off potential health around him. Mm-hmm. I think I think he does. I, I just know just everybody you talk to about how hard he works. And I know that might sound cliche, but I just know that he's going to put himself in position to be as best as he can be. And he's he hasn't missed a day of rehab. He's been here. He's been doing everything he's been asked to do and more. I think he's going to be fine. I really I truly believe that. Heckma. You know, to Kenneth to answer your question, I expect Dak to be a dog this year. I don't expect game manager Dak. I mm-hmm. expect for Dak to be playmaker Dak. You know, I I think he's been rewarded by the franchise to show that you know the value that they place on him which yeah. is a lot which is a whole <laughs> lot you know and you realize it like he said pressure is a privilege in the in the uh, press conference and I just look for him to take those strides to be on that next level I talked about him being cerebral and, and getting into those upper echelon the quarterbacks in the league I think that's what he's looking at I'm, I'm thinking that he's thinking MVP level play he has all of the weapons. Yeah. I mean, more weapons than anybody. So he has every reason to be successful, and he should be, you know, chomping at the bit to have this opportunity to uh, compete in 2021. Yeah, I agree. Uh, I think I think the expectations um, should be the same. Um, I I'm probably the only person that that doesn't think that he's 100 percent right now. I think no, I'm with you. Okay, I, I, but it's not by a lot. I don't it's, think it's, it's going to be a massive drawback. It's but, not a massive drawback. I'm looking forward to seeing him in the preseason. I'm looking forward to seeing him in the just preseason. Man, we're not snaps. playing Dak in the preseason. You, What's the matter you with you? You have to play Dak in the preseason. How much? <laughs> not a lot. <laughs> not a little a bit. Not a series. Lot. Not a lot. But you do, you need to see because. It's one thing to, to to put somebody in a situation, and I don't want everybody to get mad at this. I'm just being real, okay? It's one thing to say have it with him. Pro- I'm going to say it with my chest. Y'all know I always do. He, um, right now, he's kind of, it's a protective bubble, right? They have, he has a bubble around him. He's a bubble. He's a bubble boy right now, right? right? It, it, like a science book episode. Uh, right? So, right, he's, he's done an amazing job. <laughs> he's, an amazing, he's done an amazing job. He works hard. Wow. I've seen him work hard, right? I've seen him doing all the training stuff with, with Britt and, and that dude's grinding, right? Grinding. grinding. He's doing everything possible to be 100% Dak. Even when he feels like he is 100%, he's still not 100% until he re- reacts Right, he hasn't reacted yet, and when I say that, I mean talking about a defense lineman, right, coming off the end, right, dipping and ripping on on somebody, and then coming at his ankles, right, and being able to actually like plant instinctively and, and get out, get out of it, right. Everything that he's doing right now is boot out this way, yep. boot out that well, way, scripted. right. It's, it's very scripted. That's mm-hmm. what I'm saying. It's a bubble, right? It's kind of it's kind of protected. Now they're building his confidence very very much Which so they as they to. should. They have to do that, but he won't be a hundred, and he knows this. Until he actually has to react and avoid some defenders um, and go out there and make some plays. Once he does that, he'll be 100% physically and mentally. That's really interesting you said that because I mentioned that psychological element last yes. week. And he said that about a month ago, that's when he started getting more and more confidence. Like, I'm, yeah. I'm good, I'm back. And he said some of the stuff he's doing, rehab, because he's still in the rehab process to a certain extent, is mm-hmm. reactive stuff. Yeah. Not, not all scripted, but... 
It's not the same. Until yeah. somebody's chasing you and wants to knock you to the ground and yeah. knock you on your ass, yeah, it, you know that's that's a different story yeah. for sure. Until you're facing other teams that want to do what happened in Week Five of last year to you as a quarterback. I mean, that's the 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 plain the the 100 percent reason. I think you put this beautifully, Isaiah, because I'm not. It's not necessarily Dak who I'm not 100 percent on. It's just the the situation mm-hmm. because he will get to 100 percent. I'm confident he too. will get to that point, but it's going to take a minute. It may take a game. It may take the preseason. Who mm-hmm. knows? It could also take three or four games yeah. to get back into that rhythm. Hopefully it's shorter than you think. Yeah. Hopefully it just takes the preseason, and then by the time you face the Buccaneers on Thursday night, week one, you feel much better about it, and he's able to react and have that same kind of instinct. But it's, it's a change. And then plus, on top of the injury, any time you take a significant amount of time off from your job, doing it a certain way and doing it without so you any question, extra question mark, question mark yeah. in the back of your head, you're going to have a, a, an adjustment period. That's why knocking off the rust yeah. is a, such a cliche in sports. There's going to be a little bit of rust yeah. with Dak Prescott. It's just whether or not how quickly mm-hmm. he can get rid of that and knock it off. Yeah, so, I'm, I'm, I'm all into limiting exposure I right agree, now. I agree. <laughs> and I, I believe I agree. that. The bubble. I understand. The bubble. So we're going to keep thing. Bubble Boy. We got bubble him right now. We're going to stay with that. But. That was great. No, no. The thing is, is that I want. I, want, I mean, you know that he's a pro's pro. Yeah. He knows how to prepare for games now and is going into his sixth season. So, Gosh, that's weird. Sixth season? Sixth season. Yeah. So his, for him and Zeke? Yes. So it's not a situation. Oh he's not in a situation God. where he doesn't know what to expect or what's going to happen. No. Yes, last year was a one-off. But as far as guarding him and getting him to I, week one, hey, I that's, don't that's what I'm all about. But I also believe in what you're saying. You know, his health, psychologically, where he is. Once he feels that pressure, when someone rolls up on his ankle, yeah. what if someone has yeah. him in the grasp? And you know that Dak, with all that strength that he has, I mean, he looks like the heavyweight champion mm-hmm. of the world right now. He's still going to be Dak. Yeah. He's going to run through all of those things. I don't see him changing his game. No, I, I don't either. But to your point, it, it's, that's, the, that's a difficult thing, right? That's a difficult position you're in as not only a head coach, but as a GM and everybody else who makes decisions around here. Is you have to protect him, right? And your your job is to get him to a situation where he can help you win ball games. But at the same time, he knows he's not 100 percent until he overcomes those hurdles. He knows it. You mean? He, do you mean physically or mentally? Mentally, like just definitely. It's, it's, it's mentally. a psychological it's, it's, thing. It's yeah. physically. I I can't check that box to say that I'm 100 percent until I react to a couple things instinctively on the field. I can feel as good as I want to, yeah. but I can't check that box until Kyle's jumping at my dog on ankles and I hit him with the ooh nasty. You know what I'm saying? Like oh, now, you okay, would. okay, now, now, okay. <laughs> hey, your, your, hey, your I'm boy, back. I'm back. I'm back. I can do I'm all back. the Brit Brown drills, bands I want to, right? And I've done those personally. I've done those, <laughs> and you feel good. Right, but in, there's still that question mark. There's a freaking question mark in your head, man. The dog on Riddler is in there, and you just gotta, and you have to do your best to react to it. And once you do, all right, I'm good physically, and guess what? Now I can check the mental box too, because now I can, mm-hmm. right? I don't have to question whether or not I'm healthy right now. We talked about this with Leighton Vander Esch last year. He oh, needed the, that yeah. hit. We, we, we saw that hit too. Oh, and we got it yeah. against Dalvin Cook Absolutely. against Minnesota. That's when Leighton Vander Esch came in and said, "Bam, I'm back." Now he ended up getting hurt. I don't after want that. I don't want that hit. I don't want that. No, hit. no, but, yeah. but it's the same thing. But right? We talked about that. It. I said, I said Vander Esch could look as good as he wants to. He can feel as good as he wants to. But until he has to step up in a hole, and what happened? We were watching the game live together, and I said, "Ooh, here we go. There it is. Here we go. Boom." And then what happened? That boy had to come out the game. Yeah. Yep. He had to come out the game, but that but that let him know, "Ooh, that box is not checked yet." Mm-hmm. His box, his, as good as he felt, that box was not checked because mentally, he 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 he, he froze up, right? And physically, he wasn't ready. And yeah. those are two things that you cannot do. No, and now, you're talking field. about the hit against I'm talking about Los the hit Angeles against LA yeah. in the in with week the one. Yeah. yeah, see, yeah. And, and I was thinking was when he finally when he came back from that, yeah. And he was like, okay, now I am back. Yeah, yeah, and he hit, put no, the hit on the goal line against one. Dalvin Cook. That yeah. was the positive one. Absolutely. But you're right. Yeah, I'm talking about the first week. Great yeah. point. There's two. Yeah. 100, you could go back to both of those plays negatively against the, the Rams, yeah. positively against uh, the Vikings in the middle of the season. Yeah. That's the way that it, yeah. it works on a player that the is. Second time, he checked the box. Che- second time he checked the box. Second time he checked the box. First time he did not. First, first time there's a question. That's mark. a great point. <laughs> and, and I don't think there's a better way to, to, to close out the show in that regard because that's, that's what Dak's going to have to go through, and we're going to see it of course here over the next couple of months but until we come back 
on Talking Cowboys uh, in the middle of training camp. We're not exactly sure when those shows will start, but we will have plenty of content mm. on DallasCowboys.com. Heck, my Harrison's now writing for DallasCowboys.com. Hey, doing a great job. Check out his new piece. He's doing a great job. Yeah, go check it out. Uh, he's got Thursday Notes, Who Turned Heads on Thursday on the website. Mm. He does a great job with that. He'll do some more writing as well. I don't want to leave, Kyle. I know. I don't want to leave. I don't want out. this to leave. I don't want this to be Oh, I can't. I don't it's have a really, life, guys. Just like a, so we just got to come back next Monday, you know, even if we don't do a show. It's going to be you in here. <laughs> <laughs> it's not even going to be anybody sitting here with headphones on. on. <laughs> Looking at the camera. That's me. I'm going to be right back here with headphones on Monday the 11th. Rob's going to walk What is this doing in there? Doing the symphony in your head by yourself in here? I never know what he's doing. In the dark. Oh, man. Rob, of course, is doing great stuff on DallasCowboys.com. Anything crazy coming up? You, you've got a couple big things on your plate. I don't know if you can big, talk big about things. them, though. Mm. Uh, mm. Deep Blue is back. Bam. We're finishing. Yeah, I need to... I don't have a life either. I got to finish that. So before any type, I can even think about vacations. You I'll need a voice. You need a voice or something to holler at your boy. I, I got will. Mm-hmm. Right. The, sol- the sultry voice of heck, my hair. Mm-hmm. Smooth R and B. Sultry. <laughs> <laughs> and then Isaiah is doing great stuff as always. We've got a new show debuting on Thursday. Oh yeah, it's yeah. What's called show? Hit Sticks. Oh, I didn't, Hit Sticks. I didn't realize that we, that was getting pushed debuts, out. <clears throat> debuts on Thursday. So now, yeah. now have now you filmed this yet? Yes. Oh, yeah, it's already mm-hmm. done. I didn't know about yep, this. Yep, we've got episodes one and two. They're going to come out every Thursday up until training. That's where I'm going to get that $20 from. <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah, you want to you want to explain what, what Hit Sticks is? I, I'm on yeah, it with I'm you, excited. but you're the star I'm of the show. I thought, I thought it got tossed, man, but it's good to hear that we're rolling with it. Um, now, Hit Sticks is essentially where you know, myself, Barry, Barry Church, and uh, and, and Mr. Kai, KY, uh, we're doing a, a show where in which we are teaching the game through the lens of former players, but we're teaching it using Madden. Wow, using technology. Using technology. A little, little esports, baby. Whoever so, came up with e-sports. that concept needs a raise. Absolutely, they do. Absolutely. They it do. definitely wasn't yep. me. I'm the producer of it, but I think there, Derek was the one that came well, up Derek uh, already has office. a raise, yeah. so let's yeah. not even worry about that. We'll, we'll take his good. leftovers, okay? Yeah. We'll take his leftovers. Yeah, right? yeah they'll get the $20 from that. <laughs> <laughs> But we've we've got plenty of content if you want to keep up with us. He's at Heckma underscore Harrison. He is at I am Standback on Twitter. Rob Phillips three on Twitter, and then I'm at Kyle underscore Yeomans. But that's going to do it for us this we'll off season back. on Talking Cowboys. Yes. We will be back in about a month or so. Training camp on the way. But until next time, for all these guys, for Scott Purcell, Chris Beam, who's not here, but we're going to thank him anyways. Aaron Gonzalez, happy birthday, Aaron. By the way, happy birthday, birthday, Aaron. I'm Kyle Yeoman saying so long. We'll see you next time on Talking Cowboys. This has been a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about this, Cowboys? Yeah!